Hey guys, it's Gus. And um, there's a term that has been popping up a lot more lately. And let me explain it. It's called an HR buff. And that's when a hunter ranger builds around buffing. Uh, there are some nuances about this build. Uh, one being for five man content, meh. <clears throat> the damage you're losing probably um, isn't good enough for to make the burn any better but for 10 man content the the damage we lose by going buff is usually exceeded by the damage the group gains from the buffs uh as an hr buffer you still have to do damage you know but if you're getting first or second on the board something's wrong usually when that happens is um if it's like a training group or you're just um, built really good and there's a lot of trainees in the group in that scenario you probably shouldn't go HR buffer because the um, the amount of damage you're losing probably isn't ex uh, that groups damage probably isn't exceeding that also HR buffer is great for the um, newer players or the players that don't have their full build yet because they're providing way more group utility and um, uh, just pulling their weight more with the buffs. So there's not a lot to it. The two main things that are um, central to the actual Hunter Ranger is commanding shot, which is a great, um, it's a ranged encounter. And when you use it, uh, the enemy takes 10% more damage for 10 seconds. And what's nice about this debuff is it's unique. There's a lot of debuffs on multiple different types of uh, characters but a lot of them are the same so they do not stack <clears throat> for example the warden has thorn ward but that is the same debuff that you'll see I believe on the uh, guardian fighter and the rogue so if all three people are using it uh, only one of them works so it's wasted but this if you're the only hunter in the group this buff will work every time we there's very rarely should we not be using this buff it's that good <clears throat> yes we lose damage but the group does way more damage and the second one is aspect of the pack and what this does is give all 10 players in the group that are within 30 feet of you five percent combat advantage which is nobody complains about that <clears throat> most players love that so when you take these two buffs I mean they're pretty good it's nothing like the heyday when we used to be doing like 80 percent debuffs but these two buffs are, are really good and then when you're using commanding shot you also get stag heart <clears throat> watch the top left the health bar that's about 150,000 hit points right there which is great in most trials there's certain places like in crown it's good on the hypo it's good if you cast it right before the supports come and it's also good when whoever has the red circle for getting the dragon landing on them, <clears throat> that will help their survivability. So, um, it, and it only, you can do it in midair. I mean, it's such a quick move. It doesn't take you any time to cast it. So uh, use that. Now, if you're going to go <clears throat> part buff, might as well go all the way. And here's what I got. Just one sec. Sorry, I had to clear my throat. Okay. As an HR, you will want to go Vistani set. The reason being, this this set is unusual. If you use an AOE power that only hits one enemy, uh, that enemy gets a 5% debuff, which is really good. And we have two great powers that can proc it. So if you go to your powers, uh, both split shot and split strike work. Split shot, I will use... If I'm really, if I took the purple really far out, I'll use it so that the group can start getting that debuff quickly. But mostly, I only use it on the phylactery when it's flying around this the um, the platform. You can use that and um, debuff it from far away. But generally, I'm using I'm sorry, I didn't mean, split strike. It's super fast, uh, super fast. I mean, um, and that debuffs up. Now you got to practice with this because the problem with this. Vistani said is if you use the same power again during the debuff It's about a 10 second downtime where you can't cast it again But if you wait till right after the debuff ends and uses it the debuff will come right back up So you can have almost a hundred percent uptime 
the next thing you'll want to do is you always want to go MC weapons. <clears throat> now, if you're the only person in the group with MC on, the, everybody will gain a 2% buff and 2% damage mitigation. And maybe not in that scenario would you use it. But if only two or three people are using it, then definitely use it. And then um, <clears throat> normally the top DPS are getting the Frozens, the Demogorgons, and the Mithlar set. Since you should not, if you are, something's wrong, going to be the top DPS. Take the debuff artifact that won't uh, help those big, the big hitters. For example, I usually have on Chromatic Storm because nobody likes using it. So uh, I don't get told to put on something else. But there's a ton of artifacts you can use. I have a lot of them lined up right here, just a sec. Halicer Scepter. Heart of the Black Dragon usually is going to go to one of the big hitters in the group. Knives, Charm, Lantern. Thirst is great. Thirst is one of those ones like Chromatic Storm that if you use it, nobody's going to tell you to take it off. And then a demo, of course. And then we got other debuffs. The Jewel of the North, I don't even have here. I have yet to figure out a way to cancel that animation like we can on Thirst. <clears throat> it takes you flying across the screen. I don't recommend it as of now. But the Vanguard's Banner, the Neverwinter Standard, the Fae Emblem, and the Frozen... There are some groups that don't allow any Frozens. Uh, the Frozen is very overrated. The thing is, is if you got a super high DPS in the group, it, it just <clears throat> their damage is way greater with it. So that's why we'll sometimes use it. But generally, debuffs for the win. So, oh, and then one more thing on the front page. <clears throat> the Asmir, the Asmir, however pronounced, race is coming back out very soon. Um... I don't have any excitement about that. I've had it for, what, over two years now? I've never used it. It has some group utility, but in the current content in the game, it's not really that helpful. It may be in the future, but other uh, there's two other races that do help the group, and that's the Drow and the Menzo Baranson Renegade. The Menzo... Now, I don't go Drow, I because generally a lot of the tanks will be on Drow anyways, and if you have two of them, they don't stack. But a Drow and a Menzo do stack. Now, there's a lot of downsides with the Menzo. The first one being it's stupidly expensive. Okay, so don't get it. Don't spend that much money unless... I, uh, I did. So I, I don't recommend doing what I did. But if you got it, great. You will very rarely, if ever, run into the problem of having two Menzos in the group. Also, the problem with the Menzo is when you're doing five-man content or soloing, you lose those 6% stance stats you would have gotten from the Metallic Dragonborn or the 5% from the Wood Elf or the, um, the other one, the Gif. So you're losing stats and you're also losing 2 strength, which is a half percent more damage as well. So you take a big hit by using this, but the thing about the Menzo is Drow is 5% debuff. The Menzo is a 3% debuff and 3% damage mitigation. Um, as an HR, it actually procs fairly often, so we have a pretty high, high uptime. And then, <clears throat> for the powers, I didn't mention the Hawkeye. I, when you cast this, everybody in the group's encounter damage increases for by 5%. It's only for 5 seconds. I don't believe this actually improves the group's damage more than the damage... I, were you losing by using it? I might be wrong, but I haven't noticed anything positive by using it. Uh, so it, it's up to you, though. And then, of course, since we're going buff, most groups, 10-man groups, you know, a traditional will be two healers, two tanks. And we have four major um, support companions that we're generally using. We're generally using the Dritz, the stalwart lion, the spine devil, and if your group has one, a tutor as well. Well, guess what? Since you're going debuff, might as well just go put on that second lion. Generally, a lot of players don't like when debuff, debuff, when DPS uses lions because it's a threat to them being top on the leaderboard. But if you're a DPS HR buffer, nobody gives a shit because you should not be on the board. Uh, so that's not going to make a difference. And two lions is, in my opinion, way better than one lion. So yeah, you're going to go support. Um, you're going to go um, uh, support companion as well. 
The only reason I have this here, the Jagged Dancing Blade, is to tell you not to use it. It's like it was made for Hunter Rangers, right? Every time you use an encounter, you have a 10% chance of reducing the target enemy's defense by 5%. Well, it's broken. It doesn't work. And multiple people I know have upgraded to Mythic not knowing that. So buyer beware on that one. But don't use it. <clears throat> and then the last thing... Oh, so generally... There are um, debuffs that are really good, like the armor break, the dull senses, and vulnerability. But usually the four supports in the group, the um, the healers and tanks will take those all up. So really no need to use those, but you may be asked to use them. I don't, I haven't been asked, but just an FYI. So generally go with something that increases your damage as well, because you still want to do damage. You know, if you don't do any damage, then you're probably hurting the group more than you're helping the group as a buffer. And the last is you will want to go debuff uh, mount because, you know, there's the E-Line, there's the Rex, there's the Pegasus, um, and I'm probably missing another one. But uh, generally, there's room for five so that two tanks, two healers, and the buff HR will go uh, uh, support mount power. You probably should as the HR use the bat swarm because you will benefit from the 15% damage gain more so than the healers or tanks will. But sometimes the tanks may use it because they need the mitigation on the damage. But I think when you use it as the HR, everybody gets the damage mitigation anyways. But yeah, as the HR, you're probably going to be using the bat swarm and not TV uh, and let the big hitters use the TV. So that's what I have as the buff HR. In my experience so far, every team really enjoys having a buff HR on it. It's, um, you know, we're not the strongest hitters in the game. Uh, this is the one thing that helps us stand out as a class right now and um, take advantage of it. If there's two HRs in the group, who's going to get it? Well, most people say the lowest, the lowest item level, right? Well, that's that generally the case because if they're training – and they fall early in the trial, we lose all those debuffs. So um, sometimes you don't want to put the least experienced person on these buffs because they're really strong. I mean, they help the group immensely. Uh, you've probably seen me and others make a lot of burn videos or speed runs. It's just utilizing as many buffs as we can. They're, they're so... Um, a lot of players that are joining don't realize how good debuffs are in this game, and we got to use them. Oh, uh, I was going to stay, stay classy, but I got a little bonus for you, just in case anybody was curious. So we're going to go to campaigns. We're going to go to Dragonborn Bell. We're going to do this, and we're going to go. I'm going to see if this gives us collection points, because I have no idea. So let's see if it gives us any collection points. Ah, no collection points. Okay. Let's see what it looks like, just in case anybody's curious. I have a feeling it's it's account bound, so let's see. Preview. Yeah, that's what you get for getting 200 crown completions. Whoop-de-doo. Up to you guys. All right, stay classy, Neverwinter. See you soon.